So welcome everyone. My name is Hillary Kane and I'm a member of the Coordinated Campaign Committee, which is the committee at the national level in the Green Party that supports candidates and campaigns. One of the main ways we do that is through periodic webinars and trainings like this one. And I am joined by my colleague. I'm Starling Rankin out here in Kent, Washington, a uh, long time Green, used to be on staff with the National Party and I'm uh, a member of the media team also and um, help out with, um, with the stuff, stuff that the CCC is doing as a volunteer. So I'm happy to be here today. Great, thank you. Um, so today's training is on campaign websites. It's gonna be a pretty basic and introductory training. So I just wanna put that out there. Um, I'm gonna share screen um, bum, 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 and get the slide deck up here. Doo, doo, doo get us started. Um, so we were supposed to be joined um, by with us, uh, Diana Brown from the media committee, but she unfortunately had a conflict. So it's just going to be Starlene and I and we're going to do our best to cover her content. Um, so the first thing we want to do is get to know everyone. So I'm actually going to take the screen sharing off just so we can see each other. But um, feel free to introduce yourself with your name where you are. Um, your relationship to the Green Party and what you were hoping to get out of this particular session. Um, so why don't we start it with Sylvia? And then feel free to, you know, call on the next person when you're done. Hi, uh, Green Party of Hawaii membership chair. Uh, our website is a mess. That's, that's say no more, that's fine. <laughs> Um, what platform are you using for your website? Nation Builder. Okay. We also have a WordPress, so we could go either Nation Builder or WordPress. Okay, okay. good. Um, why don't we stay in the Hawaii time zone? So Nikhil, Ananda, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. <clears throat> By the way, I heard your last comment. I hope this is more preferable. Uh, Nikhil Ananda, uh, I've been, uh, helped found the Green Party back uh, 30 years ago. I've been a candidate numerous times. I've been, uh, when we had county committees, I was a county chair, co-chair, and also I've been a state co-chair a few times uh, for, or for a couple of years over the years. And I'm planning on filing once again for, uh, uh, the state house of representative this year great and great. i do have a website i use vista print i've used it for years they provide assistance and it works for me and i hadn't been on it for a couple of years and i've just re up and uh, again i get assistance from them they're really good about uh helping so it works good. for me good well, anyway we'll and thank you uh, hillary and starlene for everything you've done for so many years Oh, and Holly. Hi, Holly. Welcome. Hello. Great. Um, Michael, how make Michael K. How about you? You gotta you come off mute there. You moved it, yeah. You're still muted. Do you have to take him off? Do you have to let him? I don't think so. I. Why don't we try Michael Cooper first and then we'll go back to Michael Kerr. Hello, I'm Michael Cooper. I'm with the Indiana Green Party and um, with my local Northwest Indiana Green Party. Uh, I will be running for mayor next year. So I'm gonna be starting mm -hmm. my campaign uh, in July, uh, getting signatures, so. That's great. What town in Indiana? Portage, Indiana, along the right. yes, south, yes. south shores of, the, of Lake Michigan, just outside you, of Chicago. And you ran before, right? I ran for a uh, city council seat. Got it. Sounding familiar. Michael Kay, are you ready to come off mute and introduce yourself? Yes, I am. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, I'm Michael Kerr. I live in uh, Bay Point, California. It's uh, just outskirts of uh, San Francisco area, um, near Walnut Creek, Pittsburgh, Concord. 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Green Party candidate for uh, Congress in the uh, 10th district. And, uh, and because no Republicans uh, was able to uh, sign up, I'm gonna be going all the way to November. In the top two, nice. Yes. That's great, that's huge that's in California. Great. Yeah. Okay. I guess, um, nope. I guess it's only happened once before in 2018. Well, yep. Um, Eileen, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Eileen uh, with the uh, Green Rainbow Party in Massachusetts and on the Communications Committee and struggling with website issues and uh, both mainly um, our state one, but also as candidates are coming up. Great, welcome. Holly? Oh, I'm Holly Hart. I'm in Iowa City and I am a member of the Coordinated Campaign Committee, currently a co-chair and um, I do manage a website and would love to know a whole lot more is the workplace website, but I've been also very interested in just getting much more technically proficient in this. So thank you guys for doing this. Sure. Um, big disclaimer, this is fairly introductory, so I don't know That's that fine. We'll help you get to the next level, but we'll do our best. Um, I think speaking for myself only, but perhaps Darlene, like we're not exactly trained website professionals, but we're just, you know, like longtime greens who've been doing this long enough and have, you know, picked up various tools of the trade. And we're just sort of sharing our layperson wisdom, I think is how I will frame this. Um, uh, Elizabeth. Hi, I started serving the Green Party oh, almost 20 years ago as a Green Party of California. Um, members of the and and co-facilitator of a green part green issues working group and the P platform committee and founder of west side greens a local i mean co-facilitator west side greens a local and then went to um be help with as a gpus um delegate uh, to Hawaii for a couple of years. And now I'm in the Global Greens working on the climate working group and the alternatives to GDP working group. Wanted, I, I started a nation builder website about 10 years ago and I'd like to get back into it and start some kind of a campaign that um, on an issue. Thank you. Great, good, good. And last but not least, Ben. Yeah, uh, Ben Emery. Um from Big Island, Hawaii, um, long time green since early 90s, uh, former co-chair, county chair, and um, multiple time candidate. I'm um, just kind of helping the, where I can on the peripheral with the Green Party. My wife is a co-chair of the Hawaii Green Party. So this is kind of in help of her as well. Um, so just trying to get the grassroots, keeping it alive and going and learning mm -hmm. how to do a little bit of everything. So. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's what we have to do as Greens, learn to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, well, great. I'm glad Hawaii is uh, out in force today, or this morning, I shall say, for you guys. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm impressed. 40% of this yes. uh, gathering. Yeah, maybe even uh, Ben, Elizabeth, and Sylvia. That's right. The right time of day for you guys, Saturday. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing so that you can see this is admittedly more candidate focused than party focused, but I think we'll also get to screen sharing some actual websites in the back end and stuff. And so hopefully it will cover everyone's needs. Um, so in terms of campaign website basics for a candidate, um, there really are some basic essential elements, things that you want to make sure your website has. Um, a lot of this will seem obvious, but then again, we've come across many a campaign website that we're missing some of these features and it really can, you know, it can hinder the utility of your website if you're not really, um, you know, making the most out of it. And if you can mute, if you're not already muted, just um, while I'm presenting and then when we get into Q&A, um, certainly we can have more discussion. Um, so in terms of basic info, like, you know, you want to make sure that your website at least says what you're running for and, you know, what district and especially some, you know, the election date, 
especially as the date gets nearer and other instructions that people might need for voting. Um, you know, it can be more complicated these days with vote by mail in many places, perhaps early voting, um, you know, where to make sure when, when is the last day to register, like all this information can actually be really helpful. Um, and to provide it on your website is a, is, you know, helps your potential voter. Um, but yes, minimally, you want to talk about like what you're running for. And, you know, if there's a district, you know, a map of the district would be nice as well so that folks can see and say, oh yeah, like that, that covers me. Like I am part of this district. Um, you want to have a bio. Uh, it doesn't have to be super long. This isn't like, you know, an autobiography, right? A few paragraphs is plenty. Um, it really conveys who the candidate is, right? Like what your backstory is, how you come to be here. Um, and it's a little bit of the story that you're trying to tell in terms of who you are and why you would make the next great city council person or whatever. Um, you know, your bio is hopefully going to humanize you a little bit. Um, it's not the place for just everything you believe and your issues. It's really about who you are as a person and maybe how you came to have those beliefs. Um, and it really, it's also a little bit, I mean, it can be separate from a sort of why I'm running for office statement, but you want to touch on what motivated you to run for office. Um, and so here's like a little snippet and snapshot from one of our candidates last year. Um, you know, in terms of like the type of, um, you know, the type of information that we're looking about. So key information um, that will help folks get us just get a sense of who you are and why they might want to support you. You want to have some featured issues. So maybe not, you know, it's not so much in the bio, but you do want to have a section of your website where you're talking about policies and key issues, why you're running for office, what you're hoping to accomplish. It's not a laundry list of every single possible thing that your, you know, that the governor can deal with or the city council can deal with. You want to highlight maybe three to five main issues. Think about what matters to the district. Um, you know, it's not really great. I mean, it's not like if there's no rules, but like I would if you're running for city council, I would advise you not necessarily to focus on the war in Ukraine, for example because that's not something that city council is gonna be affecting, right? Now you can make resolutions and whatnot, but you wanna make sure that you're talking about issues that are that matter to that district and to that level of office. Um, and you want some short and accessible statements, things that folks can you know, understand. This is not a place necessarily for position papers and deep, deep policy an analysis. Um, and I would say you'd like, you know, you, you want to imply and sort of hint at maybe not get very in the weeds because then you get sort of bogged down into something specific, but um, to sort of talk about some of the actual policy change that you might um, champion if you were elected to your position. So not necessarily just like, oh, I support education. Well, great. I mean, most of us do. <laughs> you know, what specifically are the issues in education that you, if elected, you would be pushing, right, as the next school board member, for example. And so, and then here's like a snip, snip, um, a snip from, it was this is actually Bart Everson's website from last year. Um, he was running in New Orleans and, you know, it, I like this sort of nice like policy overview and then three things that he put um, under his, you know, this was just obviously the menu. Um, but it's also, you know, it's pretty specific, like energy is their local, um, you know, you, you know, en energy utility. So, it, you know, it's very specific to um, New Orleans. But then if you also notice like a green New Orleans deal, like that's also a really nice way to take sort of like, you know, a national platform issue and localize it, right? Like what would it mean to have a green new deal in your community, um, for example? Okay, essential, essential is a donation page, right? Your campaign needs money to run on. And so you definitely, you have to be able to accept credit card donations. Um, I would also advise accepting PayPal donations. Um, also always include an address for people to mail in checks, right? It may not be super common, but there's somebody out there who either doesn't wanna use a credit card or doesn't have a credit card 
And you should always be able to and make sure that folks, you know, can donate in some ways by any means necessary. Um, so definitely include an address. Um, you want to make sure that any legal disclaimers that are required by either your city or county board of elections or your state, or if you're running at the federal level, the FEC. Um, at the FEC level, it's usually things like I'm a US citizen. This is my own money. It wasn't given to me by somebody else. Um, you know, I'm making this donation of my own free will, whatever. I mean, your board of elections will be able to provide that language for you. Um, and you can make sure that that gets integrated into your donation page. Um, and then also make sure that your donation page captures the donor information required for campaign finance reporting. Um, and I sort of wear the, say this wearing my treasurer hat as the party treasurer and someone who's been a campaign treasurer for many years. I've seen a lot of like small grassroots campaigns um, where it's like a GoFundMe or some other thing. In fact, when I was looking around last night at candidate websites pulling this together, I clicked someone's donate page and it went to like a personal Venmo. And no, 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 no. <laughs> um, a, that just like, it's not really a great look. I mean, it just seems a little fishy. Like I'm giving you money personally, really? Um, and depending on how much money you raise, like in most jurisdictions, you're allowed to run like campaign money through your own bank account, but only up to like $250, $500. Like it's a pretty low threshold. And then once you raise a certain amount of money, like you really need your own separate um, campaign committee and have it like declared and, you know, and there's reporting and like a whole nine yards. And you should really prepare for and assume that you will be getting enough contributions to trigger those requirements and to make sure that you're capturing donor information. So you've got to use a system where when someone donates, you're getting their name, their address, um, usually occupation and employer, as well as having it record the date of the donation and the amount. Um, so just make sure that all that is part of your donation page. Okay, um, other basic stuff, you know, you definitely want a professional headshot. Um, you know, if you have a friend who has a really nice fancy camera, great. Um, I mean, these days cell phones are a, a, like a million times better than they used to be, but they're still not quite as good as a real like professional camera. And so I do recommend, um, you know, it's worth a few hundred bucks to go to a, a studio or get a, a, you know, a professional photographer and to not just do a headshot, but to do some action photos, you know, do you have other photos of you like speaking at a rally or, you know, walking with your family or walking with constituents or any of those kinds of things that show like who you are and what the, the like the kind, like give the image of what you might be like as the elected official. You know, it's very much about projecting, you know, imagine me as governor or imagine me on city council and trying to sort of cultivate that image. Um, you obviously want to have some general contact info. So people who want to find out more, right? Like they can email the campaign, they can call. This is not necessarily to you personally as the candidate. Um, it could be a volunteer or somebody else checking this account. But if you're going to provide that information, then of course, be sure to check it, right? Like nobody wants to call a phone number, leave a message and then never, ever get called back. Um, you want to also have a way for people to sign up to get more information, right? Like part of what we're trying to do is sort of build a base, a base of support, build a community. And so you want to be able to try to capture folks' information, get them to put in their email address and ideally their name and maybe phone number and whether they're like their address so you know if they're in your district or not. Um, so that later on, you can send out information to them, reminders, you know, press statements, any events that are happening, anything like that. Starlene, I saw you came yeah. off mute. Did you want to join? Yeah, um, as far as uh, using a phone goes, there is Google Voice, which is good, but um, Nation Builder also has a, a phone number available for you. Yep. Most of the accounts, I think maybe like really, really basic might, I'm not sure you could check, but you can get a, um, a phone number through Nation Builder. You can set up to be voicemail only, and uh, the recordings will show up there on the on the page for for phone, um, and you can listen to them. 
it automatically creates a profile for anyone that calls. And but you can also set it up. And of course, you can record your own outgoing message. It also you can put in a phone number if you want to go live and actually answer calls live. You could put in your phone number or a staff member's number and it could go directly to a real phone. So that's something to keep in mind too. Yeah, that's great. I think there's a small extra fee for that, but it's it's very reasonable. Yeah, nine dollars a month usually. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, depending, most jurisdictions do require some sort of paid for by disclaimers on everything that gets printed. And I think websites are no different. And so just make sure that, um, you know, that whatever requirements are from your jurisdiction are on there um, and sort of like, you know, crediting the committee um, as the fiscal entity, um, the same way you would for like a poster or a brochure. Okay, so that is, those are the sort of basic essentials of a good website. A better website will have more elements. Um, so let's go through those. So, um, you know, what I started to see on some nice looking websites are a video statement. Um, you know, not everybody consumes information the same way, right? So while I might be ready to read something, um, other folks, particularly perhaps younger folks or just, you know, people on their phones versus, you know, at a computer might want to just watch a short video of, of you sort of doing that why I'm running kind of thing. So you can embed them directly into your website, which is nice. Um, this I grabbed last night from Kearney um, Warren's website. She ran last year in Pennsylvania. Um, and it was, you know, it's, I like the way she has it both the you know, the written bio next to that sort of why I'm running statement. Yeah, Starlene. Yeah, um, just keep in mind though, a bad video isn't gonna work for you. Like, you know, it's better to have no video than a bad video. So um, I can, I'm perfectly willing to work one-on-one -on -one with folks on how to create a good video. There's obviously YouTube um, training videos also but um, make sure that the video is really polished and succinct and, and the lighting's good and you look good and you know that it's really appealing to people. And folks um, can hear you. And short, <laughs> nothing long. Nobody, especially young people, not gonna watch, watch anything more than a few minutes. Yeah, Holly, I see you raised your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to, because people often forget this and I've actually seen it happen or heard it happen. Uh, you, if you're out, especially if you're outside, you absolutely want to be very clear about the sound. Um, most sound is going to be okay if you're inside. It's you know reasonable. But I just I saw a very nice candidate video once. It was great. It looked the shot looked great, and it was windy, and you could you know all you heard was like bat wings flapping. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you want to be careful. And there are people who can help, like a lapel mic or something like that. But just but just think, uh, watch that if you if you're thinking of doing something outdoors. Um, if, you, if you can hire a, a professional videographer, you know definitely uh, do that. Yeah. Or if you have someone on your team, a volunteer that has experience doing video one um, um i also wasn't i was also going to mention you say a few minutes but um no usually the best videos that people are going to watch are no more than two minutes and that's getting awfully long yeah or, yeah so just and i would say there is definitely a time and place for more sort of off the cuff in the moment um you know non-polished non-edited videos but I don't think your sort of introductory why I'm running statement is that place. And so I think, you know, particularly the way social media has evolved that there is sort of a more, a trend towards more like short, you know, like sort of Facebook live kind of like, you know, um, TikTok. TikTok style, <laughs> like just really short, like, you know, just me on my phone talking, you know, like that kind of thing. That's and I fine. think that's fine for like, quick responses to, you know, news, like breaking news, um, you know, an action that you might be doing that where you want that sort of raw edgy kind of feel. But I think that sort of like, hi, I'm Hillary Kane. And this is why I'm running for city council is not, you know, that informal sort of yeah. like talk to your cell phone selfie kind of thing. Yeah, those other ones are better for your social media accounts, Instagram, exactly, and Facebook and Twitter, and then, um, you know, you can have a link to all those social media accounts on your website, obviously. Yep. In fact, I think we have a slide for that. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing is that you also want to ideally have some dynamic content, right? Like, so the whole point, I think one of the things that I look for in a candidate website is that there's some signs of life, right? That I can see through the website 
that this campaign is active and it's doing stuff, right? And so do you have a calendar of events, right? Well, first you have to have the events, but if you have events, you wanna put them on a calendar so that people can see what you're doing, not only so they can perhaps go to the event, but just, it's also about the image that you're projecting that there's like a lot of air there, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on. Like this is a dynamic ca campaign with, you know, like I've got places to go and people to see, right? I'm getting out there. So you wanna make sure that your cal you have a calendar of events and that, that those events are getting updated, right? You wanna make sure that when people go back to your website, there's something new worth seeing, right? That it keeps people coming back again and again. Um, and then you can also do that with like news postings, um, blogs, you know, just like short statements, like what is the candidate up to? Um, did you issue a press release? Like put the content of the press release up. Um, if you had an event, write a little short recap of it, right? You kind of want to almost make it like, you know, a little bit of like a newsletter, a newsreel where every couple, you know, every few days, once a week, at least there's something new to that you're talking about, something new to sort of bring people back to your website. Um, you know, oh, we just got an endorsement from so-and-so, right? Like all of that is, you know, worthy of a press release, worthy of a short blog post on your website. And then you've got to keep it updated, right? Like you have to have someone who's really focused on putting this information out there on a regular basis and keeping it current. And then social media, as we already talked about. And so um, there's a lot. So I, again, this was Kearney Warren's website. And I noticed like, I like the way she had all the icons. So you, know, you could email her, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. This is Medium um, and then YouTube. Um, and then I've also seen on some websites, you know, I wasn't finding it as much last night. So I don't know if this has kind of become like passe or not recommended, but it used to be that you could also have widgets in websites where like it would pull your Twitter feed, like, you know, maybe like a sidebar on the right or at the bottom. I, you know, I, I have no idea if that's like necessary, um, but it certainly is possible um, and something that you might want to consider. Star, you're more a social media expert. Do you have any sense about yeah, I think you should, you know, whichever of your socials that you use the most that you focus on, I would, I would put a live feed on your website. Yeah, definitely. Maybe not on the front page, but have a, have a tab to it. Yeah, because that also helps it make it seem dynamic. And, you know, there's something eye catching, there's something new every time you, you log mm -hmm. in and go back. Yeah, and make sure social media is, you know, just, and that's going to be a whole other webinar is how to use social media in your campaign and for outreach in your state party. But, you know, make, make sure you've got somebody working on that if you can't do it yourself. Um, yep. It's so important these days. Yep. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is like the domain, right? So I think, um, you know, and there's no rules about this, like it's really personal preference and also just what's available. I would recommend and at least consider, let me just say that, that you think you do a website that is, let's say, like firstnamelastname.com, right? StarleneRankin.com or .org, rather than something like Joe 2022 or Joe for Senate. And the reason I say that is because it's not uncommon, Michael Cooper being a great example, for people to run again and again as Greens, not necessarily for the same office or in the same year, of course, because you can't run in the same year. Um, and so if you're going to run again, it's a little easier to sort of dust off michaelcooper.com and change the information rather than have to like buy a whole new domain, migrate stuff over. You know, Joe for Senate only is good for that year unless you run for Senate two years or six years later. Joe 2022 is certainly only good for that year. And so it's just something to think about. Um, you know, obviously, if you have like a tagline and you're really trying to reinforce like Joe for Senate, um, then maybe you want that. But I do think it's worth considering the sort of first name, last name situation. Michael, I see you unmuted. Well, yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, the important part is is not the name. You know, if you want to, if I mean, because it's been four years since I've ran, uh, but, you know, keeping kind of the stuff on the back end, your your mailing list, you know, the stuff that you get through the website, you know, getting a new name is, you know, 20 bucks, you know, it, it's not, and redirecting is nothing. So, you know, but you know, being sure to kind of keep 
the stuff that you have from the previous yes to carry it forward agreed i mean i think your your point is well taken that you will and this is not just website related. I mean, this is really all of the sort of, um, you know, assets of your campaign in terms of like people and relationships, you know, folks who donated to you, folks who volunteered, folks on your mailing list, do not throw that away at the end of the year at all. I mean, keep like hand that over to your party as well as keep it for your future runs because, you know, you're, you don't need to start from scratch you want to, you know, as someone, I think it was um, Lynn Serpy said to me one, you know, build your base, retain your base, build your base, retain your base, right? Like you need to keep the people you, you obviously always want to be building, but you got to keep the people that you've already got. Um, and you got to do that by actually, you know, keeping track of all that information. Um, yes, you can purchase a domain name fairly inexpensively. There's a bunch of different websites that do this. Um, you know, depending on how you're hosting your website, you may also need to pay for a separate hosting service. Um, I would also, you know, there's a lot of great websites out there that are just easy to use like Wix or Weebly. I mean, you know, there's a few of them. I would try to graduate beyond the sort of like, you know, basic domain where it's sort of like a joe.wixsites.com. And instead for a more professional look, use that domain redirect. Most sites will offer that service for a fee. Um, so just make sure that you're thinking about that as well. All right, so we've done good websites, better and then best. And this is where we're gonna start demonstrating some stuff I think with WordPress and Nation Builder. And this is really, I think more kind of more like on the Nation Builder type of website, but where like everything is integrated. So, I, and you know, we'll get more into this um, in a minute, but what Nation Builder allows for is essentially full integration. So it's not just that there is a donate page and donations go, you know, through PayPal or whatever, and then you're getting your information out of PayPal. It's that the donations actually get tracked in the back end of your website. Um, and it's it's really kind of hard to explain until you've seen it. Um, but one of the things that distinguishes Nation Builder from pretty much anything else I've ever seen, um, though there are some other things out there like it, is that it is both what's called a CMS, a content management system. WordPress is also a CMS, it's a content management system. But Nation Builder is also a CRM, a customer relationship manager. And what that means is that it's basically like a back end database, it's a people manager. It's the thing that tracks who is, you know, who is involved in your campaign, who has given money, who has interacted with your website, who has signed up for that newsletter, um, all of those things. And it puts all that in sort of one place and it's all seem like it's integrated. So someone who signs up for the calendar event then gets added to the database as opposed to manually, let's say having to pull that out of an Eventbrite and then put that in another spreadsheet. Um, I see something in the chat here. Um, how to track membership status on Nation Builder. Um, I do believe there is a feature for membership. I think you just have to sort of possibly customize it. We will take a look at that, Sylvia. I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but I know we can, we can cover that. Um, okay, so just another quick sort of, and I'm sure there's way more to this, but... Um, the WordPress versus Nation Builder. So um, WordPress is generally speaking fairly easy to use. Um, it, it's apparently not free anymore. Like that's sort of a, an asterisk here. Um, there might be a free version, but it seems like you might only get a 30 day trial. So don't quote me on the free part, but if it's not free, it's pretty low cost, um, but there's, no integrations, right? Like there's widgets and various things that you can add to your website, but it's not going to necessarily have that interactivity into like the way I was talking about with Nation Builder. Um, but the good news is that there's a lot of websites that use WordPress. In fact, my own day job, my organization, the website is entirely WordPress. Um, it's pretty easy to use and a lot of people have familiarity with it. So it will be easier to find volunteers and other folks to help keep it updated. Um, on the flip side, Nation Builder, it has all the bells and whistles. Um, it is not cheap. <laughs> so, you know, um, there's that. I think depending on 
the volume of people in your nation, like how big your site is, um, is what the pricing structure is. My local party in Philadelphia uses it. And I want to say that we pay about $300 a year. So not horrendous, um, but you know, it's also, it's a cost. Um, as Starlene mentioned earlier, you can get a phone number through Nation Builder, which we can take a look at. Um, there's definitely a steeper learning curve, right? Like it is not intuitive. Um, it has take, it take, took me a while to figure it out. Now I have a pretty good sense, um, but it's not something that is as easy as WordPress by any means. But the good news is that there's a wide, pretty wide usage in the Green Party. And so there's a lot of us who do know and do have experience with Nation Builder and can help you out. Um, the other thing that's pretty cool about Nation Builder is that depending, and I, you know, I know there's some folks on the call who want to know about this for like state and local party. There are ways, I mean, it does cost more money, but there are ways to have, a, let's say, a state party and then have a sub nation that is a campaign. The campaign, and I can show an example of this because we did this in Philadelphia. The candidate website looks different, has like a different front facing kind of feel. But the back end database, the CRM part is all the same. And some of the advantages of that is that you're basically directly getting all of those people like into your state and local party database. Um, so that's something that, and it's just a little less like, you know, starting from scratch. Um, so I think that's it. And we wanted to actually just dive in and just start looking at some websites and doing some screen shares of, you know, back end stuff. So, um, Starlene, did you want to do some WordPress or did you want me to handle that? Um, if you could, that would be great. But I did want to um, say real quick about membership features. Uh, if you go into the settings tab, uh, page and uh, the your, the one that it, it defaults to is called defaults. <laughs> and you go down a little bit, scroll down a little bit, there's a place to check that you want to enable memberships and then save it. Um, and then um, you'll be able to, you know, keep track of your members. It's just kind of the basic thing. There's Great. more to it, obviously, than that, but yeah. that's how to get started. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how many people just I'm, I'm going to stop sharing for a second, like show of hands want to see more WordPress stuff. Okay, Sylvia. Okay, we'll do a little. Um, I know most people and, and Michael. Okay, great. Um, and Holly. All right. Okay, so back to WordPress. So here, for example, this website, the green part, so there's gp.org, which is nation builder, and there's gpus.org, which is kind of a more internal, you know, like internal facing website where you have all this information about committees. This is WordPress. Um, so for example, if I want to, so I have admin credentials, um, I can log in as a user. And for the most part, this is what a WordPress dashboard looks like. The way our system is set up is that it's a bunch of pages, flat pages. Um, so if I want to find the coordinated campaign committee page, it's somewhere buried in here. Um, and then I can update it. So like later on, um, oh, I think I have to go one more further. When I'm trying to find this parent page that itself. You can, you can also search for key keywords. I did. I searched for a webinar, oh, but it was oh, like okay. too many things. Yeah, um, here we go. Know. Here's the parent page. So I can edit it, you know, and I can just type right in here, right? Like if I say hello and I hit and I update it, like that will now be on the website um, pretty quickly, right? Like it's pretty simple. So I'm going to delete that because we don't want that. Um, you know, you can link to things like, I mean, what this is in some ways the way what websites work now, you know, way, way back in the day, you just used to have to know HTML, right? You used to have to actually code the website. Um, gone are those days for the most part. And so, you know, there's usually like little like formatting tools here. If I want to add a, a line or if I want a page break or a, you know, image, a link, a hyperlink, bold things, whatever. Um, you know, you can embed media so you can add photos or, you know, 
links to reports, for example, um, a variety of things, and then usually hit update and then it's published. Um, though you can also like mess with these settings and say, oh, I want it to, you know, publish in two weeks or whatever the case may be. Um, okay, themes on WordPress. I will admit I am not an expert on theme. Themes are sort of what the front facing sort of visual representation looks like. Um, I can, there are stock themes in WordPress that you can just select from. Um, you can also pay people who are experts at this sort of thing to custom create and or sort of, you know, basically like fancy up, pretty up your, your WordPress site. Um, so I will say that I'm not the greatest. I'm not an expert on the theme. Like I know enough to be able to update a WordPress site, but I'm not super great. I'm like creating one from scratch necessarily. Um, so I know that wasn't super helpful. Um, I mean, I will say in my experience that at some level, if you want your website to look really nice and professional, like you're probably going to have to pay somebody with some expertise, regardless of what system you're using to sort of give it that sort of like professional look. There's just only so like all of this sort of out of the box templates just only go so far in terms of how they look. Other other things on WordPress that people might want to see. I mean, basically, um, great. Uh, I think the back end is the same for all themes. So for example, my day job, um, which I can show off, it looks exactly the same on the back end. Um, the front end looks different, completely different. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, I have, and I paid someone to customize it a little bit. So there's sort of diff different sections, but it, it basically posts are the same, you know, you edit, I mean, it looks very, very similar. Um, but the front end of this website looks very different, right? Um, our GP elections database is also uh, a WordPress site. So that's what this, that's the, with the way the front end of this website looks like. Um, but when you go in the back end, let's see if I still have credentials for this. Um, yeah, so big, the way it, this was set up is that each candidate, candidates are their own pages. Um, and then the races are their own pages. And somehow it's, kind of like um, a relational database, because if I was to go into here, um, you know, like there's drop down. this was all pre-customized, like we paid someone to do this, where um, to some degree, it's almost operating like a database, um, but all this stuff gets published on the front end, um, like this is what it looks like. Okay, right, so I think you can see here that this template was customized and this is what the single race, like different parts of the website have different um, templates. Okay, so I will admit that this is sort of like the limits of my <laughs> WordPress knowledge. I can update until the cows come home and add posts and add posts <laughs> and add posts. But creating something from scratch, that is a level beyond me. Um, any other questions that folks have around WordPress specifically? Holly's got a hand up. Yep. Yeah, you actually summed up my knowledge too. And I was hoping to go, because I had a couple other questions. And so I think the advice to just pay somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I, the customization on the back end, um, I also inherited something that was set up. One note about themes is that these can go out of date. You can continue to use your theme and update things to some degree. But um, <clears throat> I found in like setting up a new one, I tried to set up a new website. I had to start completely from scratch, not with something that was, and it wasn't that hard, but but that's that's been one um, minor concern. Uh, the, the, the kind of the back stuff that you were getting into 
uh, was what I was interested in. One of the things that the themes offer are little, they're not widgets, but they're side panels and things you can use. And you can add and subtract and manage those. And I found that to be somewhat of a challenge. And I think you don't really need to have all that uh, when it's set up, but um, that's one thing to just keep track of if you know where stuff is, because I found, and I actually worked a little bit with Dave Doonan, who is a, a national uh, party web manager. And it is, it can sometimes be tricky to find these things with WordPress. Yeah. So WordPress has what they call plugins, like different things that you can add um, that might like provide some functionality, like, oh, there's this like plugin for a photo gallery and you can add it and activate it. And it might, you know, it's in some ways like a custom, like a, a, a specialized theme in some ways for a, a special type of thing. Or, oh, you wanna like import, um, you know, like order your posts in a different way using drag and drop capability, right? Like there's a plugin for that. Um, you know, to be honest, this is my works one at my day job. And most of this was like set up by the guy who set up my website so like he knew what themes to add and now i can just manage them um sylvia to your previous question about i do not recommend wordpress as a database and i say that only because it's not really designed for that like obviously it can be done the elections database is a case in point but it's kind of clunky and i don't think like if you want a database there's other better systems out there whether or not you're using Nation Builder and integrating it with your website, um, I think there's just other tools out there. And so um, I'm, I'd be happy to talk with you guys more about what you're actually trying to do and what might be the best fit. Um, and while we're on the elections database, I will just take a moment to do a shameless plug for all of you candidates out there. Um, if you're not already in here and you may not know is to um, submit yourself. Like we only know what we know by people who tell us. And so we wanna make sure that um, our 2022 listings are as accurate as possible. And so um, right now we've only, we got record of 52 races um, and I'm sure there are more out there. So please, please, please um, let us know. Yeah. Okay, I see two people raising their hand, um, Michael first and then Holly. Yes. Um, well, I've been using the Pro Progressive Change Campaign uh, website, which sounds like it's pretty similar to Nation Builder. Okay. Um, it does cost twenty five a month. Okay. Uh, uh, I've had it now for like over two and a half years because um, I ran in twenty twenty. Um, I use this. I, I, I have an unusual campaign. If you look at my website, it will not be the typical website, but um, I'm more into an educational mode. But I uh, I was using so much, I had so much stuff on my campaign that it was getting real slow to update anything. So I, uh, so they asked, they talked to me, do well, do you have a, a blog or something? And, and I said, yeah, you know, I do. And, and it was WordPress and since then, I've been using WordPress integrated with my campaign website, and and the WordPress does give me. Uh, anytime somebody views a, a page, I, I know where I know that they viewed it on on that day, and I know what country it is. And I get a lot of people oh. from other countries that are viewing my web pages, and uh, and I use I use the WordPress. Uh, it's normally like a, a, for a lot of people, it's a blog, but I found that I can put information down and I can go back and add and change things. And I have all kinds of cross references so that I'm piling up a lot of information on issues. I'm trying to make it a, a resource for progressives. Uh, That's great. And for anybody that wants a, a progressive alternative to the corporate media. Yeah. This is good. I mean, this is what you're talking about. This is your website, right? It looks nice. Correct. Can you go oh. to the homepage? Yep. Uh, Hillary. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I'm not seeing. Campaign was. <laughs> the only thing I'm not seeing, um, Michael, is your name right up front, up top. You know. Right. Not like you want to say Michael Kerr creating. Yeah, you yeah. need to get your name right there at the beginning. Well, right. I, I prefer letters. not to. Uh, it's it's right down the next statement there is 
uh, there was a picture of me. And, and right, but again, people need to know like what like what is this website and. You know, unfortunately, people's attention spans are, you know, in measured in milliseconds these days. And, you know, somebody might just happen upon this real quick, just think like, oh, it's some like, you know, anti-nuke group, like that's cool. And then move on and not have any idea that it's a candidate running for office. Um, well, I did, yeah, I did find on the phones that uh, the picture doesn't really even show. <laughs> yeah, well, and certainly you want to look at, I mean, that's something I didn't even put in there, but having something, a website that's mobile enabled. Um, so that it will like automatically resize and adjust, um, you know, for phones is really important. So many people are, you know, looking at stuff on their phones these days. Um, so I guess the last thing I'll just say before we move on to Holly is that I know nothing about progressive change. Um, my sense is that like my gut an assumption is that this is, you know, related to Elizabeth Warren and her pack that she, for, you know, came like created after her run. Um, and not that there's like any thing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, at some level, it is sort of, you know, indirectly connected to the Democratic Party. Um, Nation Builder is totally different in that it's completely independent, which makes it's like open for everybody, which, you know, some people also find a little weird in that it's not like libertarians are a nation builder, conservatives are a nation builder, liberals, a lot of greens, but it's like not officially a DRR platform. And so it's just, it's just, an, it's just out there. It is just a tool for candidates and organizations general, like very generic. Um, but it's very possible that a lot of what this um, organization does is very similar. Um, Holly. Yeah, I wanted to mention um, two things. One, uh, and I'm not sure if they offer this or not, but another group, it's called the Incorruptibles, I think, dot US. Yeah. Uh, but they, uh, they actually, they'll work with any progressive and they offer a very nice campaign overview and it's basically how to take over your city in five easy steps or something. It's really nice and very in, uh, uh, inexpensive. I don't know what kind of website support they offer, but there may be something in terms of tracking data and tracking um, donors. But the other thing I was going to mention is uh, WordPress, uh, well, it depends, no, not WordPress, but uh, many uh, hosting uh, sites. My, in my uh, office, WordPress, we host on, it's hosted on Bluehost. And I don't, I'm not familiar with GoDaddy, but I think that may be similar. But Bluehost does offer a lot of other, uh, you know, other ways to manage all kinds of stuff. So a lot of people will have WordPress on Bluehost and Bluehost offers domain names. They're, they're also pretty inexpensive. You can get a paid, you know, higher tiers of support, but, uh, mm -hmm. But they offer a little more in terms of the database and, the, and, the, and that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't realize, it took me a while to realize that they weren't the same two things. It was that they were hosting the WordPress site. But right. if you're interested in checking out Bluehost, you can see if they also offer a better, uh, they offer some database options and things like that. They're also pretty basic. So it may be that you want a little something more than that, but that, that's something yeah. that's an expensive thing working out. Word WordPress is pretty ubiquitous. Like my work website is hosted on some, um, you know, ISP called Media Temple. Um, mm. But I just, we just switched like the, the part of like the place they host it is in this thing called managed WordPress. And essentially like, it's like WordPress is embedded into their domain hosting services. Um, mm like directly so it, it what wordpress is you know is pretty common and has a lot of wide utility um all right so anything else on wordpress before we move on to nation builder which i know a lot of folks have a lot of questions about okay so we're gonna look at my local party nation builder um this i think is a pretty standard basic uh, word uh, nation builder theme. I'm pretty sure we didn't pay anyone um, anything in Philly to create this, um, though I could be wrong. Um, and we have our, you know, basic information. Um, let me log into the back end so you can again see how. So the it's I don't know why this doesn't show visually, but that's weird. Um, but, but essentially you want to log in, if I can even do that. 
um, here's all my input yeah, control panel. This is what I want. So this is what the back end of a, a pretty basic nation builder page looks like, website looks like. You've got the people function, the website function, the communication function, and the finances function. Those are like the four basics. Um, the web, let's do the website function because that's what we're here for. And to, just to show you, this is an example of where we have our Philly page, our Philly website. And then this was a candidate that we had a couple of years ago and she had her own separate, um, you know, essentially website. She had her own, let's see if we can take a look at it. Um, I, I, I think it's still up. Um, let's just click and try to get to the here. Olivia for Philly. Nope, I think we did finally take it offline, sorry. Um, but she, it was a totally, like it looked different. It was her own website, it had its own look, but when people signed up, all the, those people went into the overall people category, um, which was great. Um, so back to the website here in Philadelphia. What's nice about Nation Builder is that it has a bunch of different like, templates for kinds of pages, right? So like in my experience in WordPress, most of the pages look all the same, right? Like there's a title, there's the, the meat of your post, and then that's pretty much it. Um, here, there you can have a completely basic page, but then there's also other pages that are structured to be like a calendar page for events, a donate page, it's sort of all like a little bit pre-programmed in there, which is nice. Um, and so when you create a new page um, and you give it a name, um, here, I'm just gonna do like green party test. Um, you can say what kind of page you want it to be, right? Like, is it a basic, simple page? Is it a blog post? Is it a calendar event, a donation page, a volunteer sign-up form, a petition, an event? Like all of these are sort of, you know, like common types of pages that are used in the system, but there's many more, right? So you can have like all kinds of different things um, that, they have essentially a template for, right? So there's even like a template for a survey, all kinds of different stuff. And then you can click a couple of quick boxes, like, do you want this to show up in the top navigation? So like um, the part at the very top where you see, you know, this is the top navigation, or once you're logged in, if you're an active user, then there's like a side, a side navigation. And so there's just a lot of things that Again, once you get familiar, um, it can be fairly easy to do various different things. Um, and then I guess, you know, I mean, we could go on and on like deep on this. So I want to get to questions because I know that will probably be more helpful. Um, communication is where you basically send out mass emails, right? And um, so you can do an email blast and it will go to like, you can decide whether it goes to everyone in your nation or a certain subset of people, you know, people who signed up for a particular event or people who have donated or not donated, you know, again, whatever you want. Um, but you can send email blasts. I mean, my party, my local party admittedly does very few. We pretty much are only doing like twice a month, you know, like reminder, there's a meeting tonight. Um, oh, look, we did do something on Roe v. Wade, but mostly it's like reminder, there's a general membership meeting tonight. And it gives you statistics. So that email went to 436 people and 28 opened them, which is a click, and there was a click rate of three, um, which is, I guess, is pretty sad, it feels like. Um, my, my local party definitely needs some, uh, some reviving, but um, you know, this is what sort of the email functionality looks like. Um, you know, there's also social media integration. So like if people retweet one of our tweets, that information gets captured. Um, same for, I think, Facebook. Um, finances, all the donations get tracked. And so when people donate, it gets recorded in here. All of the donor information is recorded in here, which is great. Um, you know, and that's kind of the basics. Um, mm -hmm. I see there's a question in the chat. Um, <coughs> what's the slug question, Elizabeth? 
that's sort of the shorthand for um, what like the um, the URL will be of a particular page. Um, so for example, the calendar page is going to be gpop.org slash calendar. The calendar is the slug. Um, Hillary? Yes. I also want to mention in that uh, same in communications, you can also do text blasting if, if you've signed yep. up for it. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, you know, I think for us, the biggest challenge in Philly is just staying on top of it, right? Like the most recent blog post that we have was, um, is now probably two months old and this decision was already made. And unfortunately our guy Rich was not appointed to city commissioners. And so we should probably just not necessarily take this down as a news article, but take it off the main page of the website um, because it's sort of not really timely anymore. Um, and that's something that I could do. Let's say I'm gonna go to the blog part and just sort of yeah. remove it. Yeah, it's um, really important to keep your website updated. Again, it's the same thing, yes. whether you know a non-updated website is worse than no website. Because when people go and they say, oh, this was from you know, like six months ago, they're just gonna go away. Yep. Okay, since I'm not the one who normally well, does this, I have to remind myself where exactly that page is. Sorry. Um, general question, is there one person responsible for the website? I mean, that I think I would say I at least one needs to be responsible. I would I say ideally like two because, you know, if one person can't do something right, you want to make sure there's a backup, but it has to be clear like who is, you know, like when two people are responsible for something, so that's sometimes a recipe for, um, you know, well, oh, Starlene will do it. Like, I don't have to do it. Starlene will do it. And Starlene's thinking, yeah, Hillary will do it. Like, you know, and then it doesn't get done. So I think having a pretty, um, you know, clear set of like how this is going to be, um, you know, who's like the first line of defense versus somebody else, um, you know, yeah. who can who can do it in a, in a jiffy. <clears throat> Yeah, that came up when I was working for the National Party. <clears throat> David Doonan, the uh, web manager, was the main person to update the website. But I would, you know, doing volunteer management and fundraising, sometimes I would have to do um, database work and website work. And I remember there was one time we were working on the same page at the same time. <laughs> it's like, you know, which whoever, whichever one gets saved first is the one that shows up, you know, you have to coordinate with each other and make sure each of you know what the other's doing if you're going to have more than one person do it. Right. And then Nikhil and Anda, your question about um, compensation. I mean, I think ideally, yeah, like it really just depends on the size of your campaign and what you can, you know, what you can pay for. I mean, obviously at the National Party, we do have a paid staff person who was our webmaster, David Doonan, and he handles not only our gp.org nation builder site, but also the GPUS site that we were on earlier in WordPress. As I mean, he's sort of a, you know, like all tech stuff related to the Green Party. Um, you know, most state state parties do not have enough money to hire a full-time staff member like that, but they might, um, you know, stipend someone. Um, in Philly, no, it's kind of me and one other person, which is why it's not super updated because we're busy and we don't, I don't have time. I, I have been slowly trying to train new people to do this. Um, it like, you know, it's just a lot of, like everything else, it's a little bit of discipline, right? Like for our local party, if this was updated every couple of weeks, like that would be fine. It would take like one hour every two weeks to keep this current enough. But I think for a fast moving campaign, it can definitely be more intensive and it is probably worth, you know, paying someone to be more active and on top of it. Yeah. Other questions, other things people want, I mean, Hawaii, you were like, oh, our nation builder is a hot mess. Like, do you want to get more specific? I mean, let me also just say that we are going to have a follow up to this call um, a week from Tuesday on May 31st. And we're planning to do just open office hours 
where you can literally come and we will like troubleshoot with you like one-on-one -on -one and just like help you do stuff um, to the best of our ability. Um, but, you know, so just know that that's available as well. Um, any recommendations for people to help work on Nation Builder? Um, yeah, there's definitely a couple folks. Like I said, there are, um, there's now a, like many of us who have at least enough basic experience with Nation Builder to do things. Um, you know, if you have some funds, I can certainly recommend folks who I know will do it for money. Um, and if not, then we can also have that conversation. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, David has been helpful. I mean, David Doonan, um, and he, I know he's doing the Hawkins Matera campaign website right now, I think, um, which also is Nation Builder. Um, so. The other thing that's really important on websites is your graphics. So I really suggest unless you've got a volunteer who's a trained graphic designer that you also hire a graphic designer that really knows what they're doing because you don't want your graphics to either be bad or not get across the message that it needs to uh, convey to people. Um, yeah, it's important. Yep. And, and try and use our branding colors and fonts and all that if you can. Yep. So we're consistent across the country on branding. Yep. I was on Matthew Ho's website last night when I was gathering stuff and it looks really nice. I was impressed. I mm -hmm. think this is also Nation Builder. I'm yeah. not a hundred percent sure. See, but I'm he's, he's using our green palette. Yeah. Um, and I can send yeah, anyone the yeah. branding guidelines who wants them. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, if you like I, what, Charlene, what Starlene just said about graphic design, you know, I think you can do a serviceable job yourself with various things like Canva. Um, mm -hmm. I think the key for me is also consistency, like having, you know, like a look and feel, right? And so one of the things, and like, this is not super like deep skill set with graphic design, but what David often does, it's not this in particular, but um, what he often does is like, he'll just take a photo and then just have this like green swoosh with like a headline, right? And like, there's a lot of stuff on our website that looks like this. And I happen to really like it because it's simple and it, it looks professional and it's also consistent. Like in some ways, like, <laughs> this, is, like this type of image and I know it's our website. Um, so, you know, I mean, yeah. not everything is this way, but there's a lot of this kind of like, so I just think there's also, you know, something to be said for sort of consistency and, as well. And we can, we can share things like the, the, the painted lines that you can use um, with you all too. Yep. Uh, they're on like the Google Drive, yeah. Um, all right, let me see there's more stuff awesome. in the chat. What is the URL for our nation? Do you mean the Green Party of the United States? I mean, it's just gp.org right here. That's right. It's not greenparty.org. Right. That goes somewhere else. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, I think, um, I mean, I'd have to log in to the back end here um, to see what gpus.nationbuilder is the, is the GPUS. URL. Also want to mention that um, when Hillary said that David Doonan takes a picture or photo, it's not just a photo. It has to be a, a public domain photo or a photo that you have permission to use. Or if you take something off of Flickr that's in the um, uh, Creative Commons, you still need to put in a credit you know, just kind of, you know, you'll see pictures and there'll be like a little credit going up and down on the side and real small font. You still need to do that and give, give the photographer credit for it. So yeah. make sure you're, you know, you don't want to get sued <laughs> for copyright infringement. If you take the picture yourself, obviously, or one of your volunteers do, that's fine. For sure. I guess the last thing I also wanted to make a note about was 
you know, how you should be thinking about, and this again is me wearing my treasurer hat, um, donations of volunteer time and or, you know, like, and how to account for that. And so I think the general rule of thumb, and again, every jurisdiction is different. So like big fat disclaimer, check with your county board of election or your state election agency, whatever, whoever your referring body is. But in general, if a random lay person like myself volunteers five hours a week or whatever, like you don't have to count that as a donation, right? Like that's just me volunteering my time. The same as if I was volunteering to gather signatures or go door to door. If a professional web designer volunteers their time, then you generally need to value it as if like you had paid them and count that as a donation. And so just know that that could be something that, you know, goes against campaign limits um, you know, if somebody would normally charge you $3,000 and they do that all that work for three for free, then they just gave you a $3,000 in kind donation. So just keep in mind, usually the rule of thumb is like, does this person do this for a living and normally get paid for these services or not? Um, and so that's just something to consider. Or, or if a volunteer pays for something that you would be paying for. That's also an in-kind oh, donation. Right. So if some random other person pays that person $3,000 and then just gives it to you, then the person who paid, that's an in-kind donation from them. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I think we might wrap up soon and we certainly wanna have more folks back on for the office hours next Tuesday where we can sort of help you with any specific challenges. Yeah, we can go over. I do have how, a, how to a question. Yes, I. Um, I um, I've been working on the uh, website, uh, but why we are having a, a very excessive bunch of people that are uncontactable, um, and there's I've been trying to learn how to clean this thing up. The, right now, one of my biggest challenges are people who get attached to our. Uh, records uh, uh, from Twitter, because we know, we don't know their name, we don't know their, um, uh, what they're coming on from or why. I don't know, are you banning yeah. them or what? Um, okay, so a couple of thoughts and Starlene, feel free to jump in here. But like, so I was the one who first set up and paid for our state party nation builder in 2014 for Green Party of Pennsylvania. And at first it was like, oh my God, this is great. We're like all these people and contacts. And it was a lot of like retweets and Facebook stuff. And it was like, well, how are we supposed to be in touch with these people? And so, you know, at the, in the very early days, I would like look them up on Facebook and send them a private message and be like, hi, Eileen, thanks for liking our post. Like, you know, are you, at, where in Pennsylvania are you? Like, and try to start a dialogue. And that had a success rate of like one out of a hundred. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it's very easy to like and post and re forward and whatever. I would say just, I would, my advice is just don't spend your time on that. Um, I, you know, Facebook, I mean, Facebook, nation, build, Facebook can also be a time suck. Nation builder can be a little bit of a time suck um, to some degree for a lot of, I think it's, sometimes it's like drinking through a fire hose, like, there's a lot you can do with it, but I think um, most for a local party, like I think just, I would just sort of manage expectations and not necessarily try to follow up with every retweeter or Facebook, just, like, I don't know. I mean, Starlene. What's just, your... just turn it off. <laughs> just don't, yeah. don't have all the Twitter, the tweeters yeah. and the Facebookers come into yeah. your, your nation. Just turn it off. Don't, don't have it set yeah. up that way. But if you do, you know, you just go in and delete them. Yep. But that's time consuming. I'm saying if you, if you're not going to use that, just don't have yeah. it come to you in the first place. And it's really hard to use that well and use it consistently, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It is helpful to, to post to your socials from nation builder. That's a good thing to be doing. And mm -hmm. I know national starting to do that more. Um, but and that's a why is that, thing. Starlene? What's the why is it better to post through Nation Builder versus directly? <clears throat> well, um, <laughs> I guess I don't know the simple answer to that, but um, it, it, the connection between the two 
Uh, I think David Doonan would be a better person to answer, but I remember David telling me it was important to do that. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I'm not as up on that part of it. And do you send individual texts out from Nation Builder? We can. I think yeah. we generally, at the National Party, we have invested in like a more robust texting platform that gives us analytics, that gives us basically responses back and helps us, um, you know, sort of do things more in mass. And I think Nation Builder, the limitation, like it allows for some number of free texts, like, I don't know, a few hundred, but then you don't really get a whole lot of data back. So I think it's fine for like a local campaign, a local party, you know, especially if you're going to be just like doing some individual texting. But if you're like, a, like we're trying to start doing more like robust text blasting where we're like, blasting 2000 people at once with like a quick message and a donate link and we're trying to capture the analytics so we can better yeah, customize stuff for the future so yeah here in washington i'm i'm a paid very quarter time organizer here in washington and um, we get about 350 texts a month and i always make sure we use them up every month <clears throat> and you have to count when anyone you always want to put, you know, you know, text back stop to opt out, give people the option and those texts that come back to you count towards your limit. So that's something to be aware of. Both uh, sending and receiving. Yeah. So any, and if you do a test, you're, I always send it to myself as a test like you would an e-blast that counts too. So then, the, you know, that 350 goes down and down and down and I don't quite have as many left to send out, but you know, we use it from everything like, you know, getting new members to renew to, you know, getting, um, you know, new members, uh, promoting a, uh, a gathering, a virtual meeting or something. It's, it's really useful. And less, less fewer people opt out than I thought they would. Yeah. People like it. Um, I want to go back. I forgot about the question about membership. And I also wanted to do like um, to talk about tagging real quick. Um, so here I'll now show off my own profile just so that I'm not, um, you know, outing somebody else and in their information. Um, but so for example, like you can have tags, right? So things that distinguish somebody, whether, you know, they're a part of some initiative or they signed up for something or, you know, whatever. And so for example, one of the things that we do, everyone who attends these webinars, there's a CCC webinar tag. And that's essentially like a little like mini list. And so next month, when I go to send out the e-blast that says like, hey, join us for the June CCC webinar, I basically only send it to everyone who has this tag. Um, and so that's a way to also what, what's known in, in email list, you know, like world is segmentation, like not sending everything to everybody, but trying to send the right messages to the right people. Um, I mean, this is something that I don't know that like the average can candidate or campaign needs to deal with, but certainly like at the state party level, it might be something that you want to know. Like, you know, are what what p issues are people interested in? God, I have a lot of tags. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I've been in the party for a really long time. Um, so, you know, I think there's just you know like other ways to to do stuff. I think also in the edit function is where sort of membership is. Um, so there is this memberships thing here. Um, I have never used this, so I'm just playing around on obviously, honestly, but I think you can create something like you can create, I mean, we don't use this at the national level, so I don't want to like screw something up by creating it. Oh, I guess we do have like for like caucuses, we can do that. So there's ways to like do this. Um, I think also back in the settings page. I think there's something here around um, like your supporter level. And I think you can create, there's something in here about, I thought there was something with memberships here, like whether they're like a, um, like a registered green or not, but. Um, That's under party. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> 
um, Hillary. Yep. Um, I wanted to mention uh, the way the webinars, the way the webinars that the CCC, did, CCC used to do, they would be created as an event in Nation Builder, and people would register through Nation Builder. So people would automatically get that CCC webinar tag on there. But now that they're using Zoom registration, it's a little more work because I think Hillary or Athena, someone has to go in, take the list of Zoom, like all of you that participated in this webinar and go in and tag your um, profiles individually. Right, which so I think we actually up. do through, a, I, I don't do it, but I think we do it through a batch upload. The yeah. only reason we switched and I'd love feedback for anybody who's been doing this for a long time is that, I mean, the good news, when people used to sign up for the webinar directly in Nation Builder through the event listing, um, you know, you would get, like all your information would go straight into Nation Builder, you'd get the tag, and then you would get an auto response email that said, here's like the information for the Zoom call. We got a lot of complaints that the email went into spam. And also, like, let's say you're using a Gmail, but you signed up on our nation five years ago with a Hotmail, like it's gonna go to the Hotmail. It's gonna go to whatever email is in our system. Not like it doesn't have you put in a new email each time you RSVP for something. If you already have a profile, it just sticks with what it's mm -hmm. got. And so, and then because of like the way Zoom registration works, it gives you a customized <laughs> URL for you specifically if you sign up through Zoom which makes it a little less likely for um, Zoom bombs and things like that. And so we did switch to only the last three months to having folks register directly with Zoom. And then what's nice is that you can then also, like when you get the email back from Zoom, you can just like add it to your calendar. Like it auto adds to your calendar as opposed to like you having to copy and paste from the email. Right. So when we get back to having more in-person meetings you are going to want to yeah. use nation builder for sure uh, i mean event I think sign ups the lesson learned there is that nothing is perfect and that um you know there's sort of workarounds to everything um okay pay three hundred dollars to get a dashboard yeah you definitely need to pay to get a dashboard i don't know if it's 300 but um you know in order to have any system that has some sort of back end um and then a API. So I don't know that we use any APIs with Nation Builder. An API, I don't know what API stands for, but I know it's basically when two databases talk to each other. Um, and so I don't think we have any kind of fancy integrations like that, even at the national level. Um, so I don't, Elizabeth, I don't know if there's something specific you were thinking about or just asking. Yeah. More. So. Can we start one um, through maybe a workshop at the national convention? I've already asked for, a, you know, I don't, when are we gonna be able to ask for a, a workshop from somebody officially at the national convention? Because I think we need one um, because there is a way for people to trade their carbon credits um, uh, through the blockchain. And it's a way to generate income. We can do NFTs and we can sell Green Party NFTs or, you know, put, at least put them up and get young people involved in, you know, what this NFT represents in the real world. It's carbon sequestered in the rainforest. And we can do fun things like that. I, and I wanted to uh, use the API in, uh, uh, function in Nation Builder to connect it with a, a blockchain um, resource that has uh, NFTs representing carbon credit, things like that. Okay, I mean, that's something I'll pass along. Yeah. Both right. to our Thank annual you. meeting committee and to, to staff and steering committee. Okay, so how would I be able to contribute to that without paying the $300 to get my own? Am I getting my own website on Nation Builder? So where I can just get one web page on in the gp.org? I mean, I think perhaps, I think we should, we need more conversation about this, um, but yeah, let's, let's discuss offline. I'll put my email in the chat um, and we should, um, yeah, we should see what we can do. When, when you, with any plan in Nation Builder, you're going to get a website. Pretty right. sure. But I think what Elizabeth's talking about is like a campaign, like a, a proposal for the Green Party to do something. Yeah. which would involve our website, but it's not about building a campaign website per se, mm -hmm. so, which is fine. So I'll Elizabeth, put, I put my email in the chat. Feel free to email me. I'm going to put my email in here too. 
case anyone wants to contact me. Yeah, I'll have it, Holly. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it, it's a campaign. I guess a fundraising campaign for the Green Party. But I'm thinking. Right, right. It's like, it's not a candidate electoral campaign. It's a issue like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I get it. Okay. Um, anything else? Any other questions, comments? Um, again, happy to help folks with individual troubleshooting. Any um, questions about how to use do filters? That's a really important thing to know how to do. Then we can go over that kind of thing too in the office hours. Yes, for sure. On the thirty first. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, we'll give you back a little mm. bit of your day and thanks for joining us, whether it's the morning in Hawaii or the late mm -hmm. afternoon here on the East Coast. Us, uh, Nikhil <laughs> and dog. Nikki's dog. Hi, puppy. <laughs> Not dog, it's radar. Hi, radar. Hi, radar. <laughs> we just had our uh, two and a half. You want to go over there? Here, say hello to everyone. Oh, what a we cutie. just had our two and a half year anniversary on Thursday the 19th. I picked them up at the uh, Humane Society on November 19th. And a few months later, we were locked down out in the jungle. And I really feel on a lot of levels, he saved my life. He's just amazing, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, uh, the first thing I wanna say is I feel like I'm repeating myself for the last 30 years or as long as Hillary and Starlene have been active. And it's just my profound appreciation for the two of you constantly. Uh, and, you know, I could go on uh, with that. I will take your thanks Thank you. as a free uh, housing in Hawaii one day. <laughs> well, you. Hillary, I've offered you that, I think, since the moment that we connected. I know, I just have to get the flight out there. That's the problem. But, right. And Starlene, yeah. the same with you. I know. Um, I would love to I'm go. Really yeah, I'm really impressed that we got four people from Hawaii here uh, yeah. and each state. And I don't want to ramble. I just found this workshop because I think my website is good. Not great, but it's good. I've done it on my own. And um, years ago, I think I started it when I was a county council candidate. Then I changed it. And I listened to this and I would say some high percentage. I go, oh, yeah, I've got that. Oh, yeah, I've got that. And every once in a while, <laughs> listening to you, Hillary, like you did when you, uh, I did your websites on uh, finances, raising money and all that, then I slap myself in the face and go, oh my God, I don't have that. I don't have this. And uh, just recently, a friend of mine, she just sent me a Facebook message. I uh, uh, sent her something. I don't want to go into a long story, but there's a, we have a, our congressman is, uh, our congressperson is now running for governor. And she saw, and she's not very political. She saw her video the two minutes and she just was orgasming how like brilliant this guy is because he had this professional video on his first page. And I know before you mentioned to uh, Michael about, oh, you should have your name. So all these things, and I was doing a checklist what's on my site. And uh, yeah, if we had, if my grandmother had tires, she'd be a truck. If we had unlimited money, all of these things, right? And we all know it. That's why I asked you about the Philly and the administrator. And I'm so glad to see Sylvia here because that's one of been my broken record for years. We have a website that lists our people from a couple of years ago. So we need to update it. Um, so again, I feel like I'm rambling, but, and I had two or three questions. And as a teacher for years, I always like to listen to a presentation before I ask questions. And now when I go through, I can't remember them. And if I, if I do remember, maybe I'll send you a message. But again, I just want to thank you so profusely for doing this. And just a loving reminder about uh, what we could be doing, what we are doing, where we are, and uh, et cetera. So, uh, you know, mahalo, nui loa from uh, the jungles of um, the North Shore of Maui. Thank you. I mean, I think that's a great closing point, Nick, is that, you know, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, but also we can, you can always be better the next time. Right. So like, just, you know, try something, do it. And then, you know, the next time do it a little better, you know, like learn, you know, like do, do as good as you can until you know better and then do better, I think is a, 
a bad re paraphrasing of Maya Angelou, but um, so I think on that note, we're going to close it out. And I just want to thank everyone for attending and um, please look us up online and send us emails and we'll see you hopefully some of you on the 31st. Yep. Thanks everybody.